Hi, welcome to Tom's Computer Channel and in this episode we have an Amiga 600. It's my old Amiga from back of the day and so uh, I have this one for over 20 years and now it's time to change capacitors and fix some issues. So let's start it! So this is my test base and here we are. Power is plugged in, monitor is plugged in, mouse is plugged in. Let's see if this machine still works. Oh, we have a signal. Yeah, works. And now let us see if this thing boots up. No. It doesn't boot up again. So, so we have a lot to do. So you can see it's a little bit dusty, it's a little bit yellow, like the spacebar and the F and the J key. There's some dirt, but all in one, it's a uh, good shape. The underside is an original color and this uh, beautiful white. So it's very good condition. It stands 20 years in a box, and so let's take a look inside. Screwdriver, it's in the Phillips screws. Three here. Yeah, this two are for the disk drive, and uh, there is the fourth, that's this four screws, and then you should open it carefully. There are some clips. They broke very, very uh, light, so it's all plastic. Very careful. This spot, yeah, this spot, and um, this spot. There are clips. They broke. Very light. So. So. Open. Oh, you see, <laughs> the light from the LED are not connected. So, the bracket from the HD drive. So, and then you see there is a ribbon cable from the uh, keyboard and there's a holder in this holder you move up the top there's a little clip you move up and then the keyboard gets out be very careful the scrubbing cables broke very lightly so. 
so. And you see it's a RAM expansion in store. Trap door. Hoppala. So the trap door is out. So you can from this side can get the RAM expansion. It fits very tight. You can uh, bring it out much easier from this side. So let's see. They're a little bit. There are a little bit capacitor fluid on this chip, and an old battery. This old battery we must get out, so it's damage. It can damage the whole board. So now we take out the disk drive. Disk drive is mounted with these two screws. Voila. These two screws. So. And there in this hole is another screw. Unplug the power cable. And this connector cable. So now the disk drive is out and this we clean later. But first we take a look at the main board. So, on the RF shield, we have there a screw and some tabs. So, some little tabs here, here, and here. You can bend, you can bend it. And then you can easily take off this shield. So let's take a look and all open. So then you can be carefully take this RF shield out. So you can see this is a bit dusty. Some corrosion at this point, but it has a very good condition. The computer stands very dry. So, then you must take this out from here. And this is not so easy. It, it's very tight in. So, the easiest way is to take here at this, at the uh, mouse and the joystick port, press it a little bit in and bend the plastic carefully outside and then the board must come out easily. Let's see. Yeah, so we get it out. It's a little bit dirty, but no corrosion, no other dirt and uh, nice original color.
So, and the board's out, and now we uh, clean the case. Huh. One thing I forgot before we clean the case, we do some another important thing. We disassemble the upper case. So that means we plug out the the keyboard. It's nicely plugged in. Yeah. Two hooks that hold the keyboard in place, but it is carefully. It's old plastic, and it can break very, very easily. And so, a little bit wiggle, wiggle, and. We get the keyboard out. So now we must disassemble the LEDs. It's not good if you put them into the water. It makes corrosion and damage them. It's very well built. A little RCB with three LEDs and some resistors. So this case is made at April 11th 1992 and also on this inner side it looks great. No brown, only some dust. So there it's on the side. And now we disassemble the keyboard. So we can wash the keycaps. To remove the keycaps, use a keycap remover. It's very cheap, but it's help you to get the, the keycaps out without damaging them. So, to get them out, put the keycap over the, you put the keycap remover over the cap and then pull it. There's a spring, be careful, and the keycap is out, nothing damaged. It's very important, take a picture from the keyboard before you disassemble. So that is, then it's very, very easy to reassemble this.
So, the bigger keys. On the bigger keys, like the return, the tap, and the spacebar, there are metal brackets, and then on the spacebar is a different spring. There are two different springs. There are the middle one, the middle one has the normal size like the other keys and the two on the sides there's one in the middle that's the key and two on the sides left and right they are thinner but also long don't lose them so and there's there's a metal bracket there. It's a metal bracket. You can put them out and then can you get this slide them. You can slide them like this out and you can pull carefully and then you have the metal bracket out it's a little bit dirty but it's in good shape no corrosion and a yellow space bar the return key and the caps lock uh, the tap is similar. One normal spring, a metal bracket, and check them out. Mm. Not so good to use a um, screwdriver. You can damage the keys, and then you must bought some new. There's also a metal bracket. Pull it out. It's dirty, no corrosion, in good shape. And this slightly yellowed key. So, and a normal spring. So, the keys are in good shape, no broken, no cracks, little bit yellowed. So, there. You can see it. The Amiga key, little bit yellowed. So, and now we have keycaps off and a very dirty, dirty keyboard. Dust from decades. From using, from not using. So. And now we have all done to uh, clean the case and the keycaps. So put them in soapy water, soak them, and then we brush it. Now it's time to clean the case. First, we soak the keycaps in some water. And the cleaner for dishes. It's not that dirty. You can use 
a cleaner you want for the case. And it's a cleaner for floors and some stuff. So. Now it's time for the recapping. Before we can change the caps, we must uh, disassemble the bottom shielding. For those, you unscrewed the standoffs and then it's free.
it's super clean, no corrosion. Then let's go. It's the first try at SD components for me. So a few days later, I moved my lab in another room where I have more space and I repaired the ripped pads off camera. So let's see what I have done. So these two pads these two pads are ripped off with my with the desoldering of the capacitor. So I take copper foil and uh, cut some small rectangles. And here is the trace, the one trace from the positive side. And there was a little rest of trace from the negative side. And so I, I stick the copper foil on the old positions and solder the, uh, the traces on the pads. So now we solder the capacitor the new capacitor on the pads. So there's a little bit of flux. So the new one. So it's in the right position. Now we take the soldering iron. And so the trays, the pad broke off. Mm -hmm.
So the first capacitor is this one is changed. It was a bit fiddly. So I have a little bit of issues. It's all new for me and it's not so simple as it looks. So then we have the next one also here Look. yeah it's in the right direction Now we get the next one and uh, I choose another method that I've seen and this is wiggle on the capacitor until it loose. So it's the head off. It's the head off. Then you cut the traces. Stand off. You can remove the plastic part. Then you get your soldering iron. So it's off, pads on, a little bit of flux, solar wick, we can 
clean it. So and then fresh soda. Ready to go. So turn twenty five. Yeah, it's here. This is an flux. Ready. So the next one. Also at ten twenty five comes in this direction
Now it's time for retrobriting. For retrobriting, I use this crimp oxide with 12% uh, hydrogen peroxide. So, use this very carefully. Wear gloves. On the plastic.
then wrap it in, um, in, in plastic wrap. So that's not drying. And drying doesn't work. Now the keys. So now all is wrapped in, the uppercase and the keys, now we light in the sun. You can also put it under a UV light if the sun don't shine. So we get it out and then let's the magic begin. So all caps are changed and now it's time to Power up. So, fingers crossed. White screen. Yeah, it works. No magic smoke. A good picture. So, done. So, reverb biting it on, the clean, uh, case is very clean white. Now it's time to rinse them in some water. So, let's start it. Now they are clean and good and white. Some little yellowing on them, but not that much. Yeah, it's good. Let them dry and then back to the bench. Now the boards work and it's time for a little clean up with isopropanol. It's time to put it back in the case. Now it's time to reassemble the keyboard. The keys lying in the correct lineup. So let's start.
So the upper case is complete. Let's do some quick test. Power line is running. Yeah. There are some issues. So, I think it's the floppy disk, the disk drive. So, let's see. So much for now. This is the end of part one. In part two, we try to fix the issue with the floppy disk. And fix the expansion. So, not all gone well, but it's my uh, learning experience. So, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you uh, will see part two of the series. So much for now. Bye.